All right, everybody, it is Mix 2011, and as per usual, Windows Phone 7 is coming out with tons of exciting news. So I've got the man, Joe Belfiore, standing next to me to sort of go over all the major announcements and give us some demos of uh, this year's Windows Phone news. Let's start with the annou announcements. Okay, so today we made a bunch of announcements about developer-related stuff. Not end-user stuff, although okay. some end-user stuff kind of snuck in well, there. Well, it's a good thing this is a developer audience. Developer audience. <laughs> so uh, lots, of, lots of new things. So first, we're trying to have some great new opportunities for you developers to promote your apps and get them found by end users. So that means... So they can make money. Exactly. An overhaul to the marketplace and the marketplace experience, including a new games hub. Nice. Um, better searching and pivots. Um, a, a really cool feature that's new that extends the kinds of things we've been doing with hubs, where you can find your app in people's hubs, mm -hmm. by enabling you to get your app in people's search results. So when someone does a search for movies, your app can show up as part of the, the way that the movie can get handled. I'll, nice. show, I'll show a quick demo of that. Um, second, tons of new APIs and functionality that let you do integration with the phone. And I'll see if I can remember these. Uh, some great new live tiles stuff, so you can have multiple live tiles and animated live tiles. UI controls, pickers and choosers, access to the contacts database. Uh, TCP IP sockets, wow. uh, built-in database, raw camera access, and a nice sensor API that let you get at the sensors, including our new support for the gyro. That's, That's about a all lot. I can remember in, That's in that a category. Lot. And That's then impressive. Th and then third, a bunch of stuff related to multitasking, nice. um, some of which we showed at Mobile World Congress. Fast app switching, our new multitasking UI, mm -hmm. background audio, background file transfer, and we have another cool new concept called Live Agents, where as an app author, you can write a chunk of your app that we, the system, will manage, will wake it up and have it run on different events, and mm -hmm. the idea is to balance the user's battery life with your ability to do stuff in the background. So nice. Live Agents is new. And then last, a whole bunch of great stuff for making the developer experience better. Um, tools enhancements that let you simulate the accelerometer, um, tools enhancements that let you uh, simulate the GPS, um, being able to look at a very rich profiler that helps you see the performance data of your app. Lots of great things for the developers. So is that stuff for helping them build better apps or sort of track their apps once built? Generally, build better apps. Nice. Good, which is what we all want. That's a win-win. Exactly. All right, well, let's take a look at some of, the, some of the demos. So first, let's take a look at a bunch of those things that improve your ability to get your app seen by users. Excellent. Okay, so let's take a look at how we made it easier for users to find your app. Okay. So this is our live tiles. And you remember when you pan over, today you get a list of apps. And sometimes that list can get pretty long. Really long. Well, now we automatically add the jump list. If you have a really long list, so you can just touch a letter. Say, I want to jump down to T for my Twitter app. There oh, it is. It brings you all the T's. Exactly. Nice. Fast and easy, just like it is in contact. Same exact idea. So it's quicker for you to get to the apps you care about. The next thing we've done is we've added a search right here for the apps that are on your phone. I can go here and I'll just start typing. Now I see all my A's, AM, mm -hmm. and I get my Amazons. So if I want the Kindle app or the Amazon shopping app, I can do that right there. But maybe what I really want to do is find out if there are any other apps that Amazon has available. So I'll type in Amazon, and right here we have a search marketplace. So you can search your phone or you can search the marketplace exactly. right on the same page. Nice. And so now I've done a search of the marketplace, and there's a ton of things that we've done to make marketplace searching and marketplace better. So first here you see I've done a search. This is just apps. We used to have apps and music put together, but we've now filtered it out in pivots. And when you look at this list, you'll notice we're making the search results a lot richer. Thank you for that, by the way. Well, you're welcome. Because songs are getting mixed up with <laughs> exactly. my applications. This is so much so better. So here you can see the publisher, you can see the price, you can see the rating as you scan down. These are all apps that have nice value add to do with Amazon. If I pivot over, you'll see all the music that has to do with Amazon. There's an artist called Amazon, a song called Amazon. Yeah. And now, with this update, we have built-in support for podcasts. Oh, nice. Right in Marketplace, so you can subscribe to podcasts and so on. You can get them in your marketplace search right here. So there's that. If I wanted to, I could click you know, one of these apps. We'll take IMDB as an example. I could install it right here, yeah. and it'll show up in my list, and I'll see progress this for how huge. it's This is huge. Let me tell you, for someone who spends a lot of time searching for apps, you know, with my show Hot Apps, this makes my life a lot easier. So personally, I thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> and let me show you how there's even more to the story. If I scroll down here, I'm going to jump to the Marketplace tile itself. The Marketplace has gotten a little bit of a UI overhaul. When I come to the Marketplace hub, now we show you each category category, so there's a larger number of featured apps. So here's my apps, here's my games, there's my music. 
um, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, if I pick one of these, in fact, I'm going to go to games because there's another cool thing we've done, which is to create a games hub specifically okay. for games in the marketplace. So here's the Rise of Glory featured game. Here's all the genres of games available, the featured Xbox Live games, games that are new, and now the featured area gives you a lot more. Here you, I have six featured games. In Windows Phone 7, there were only typically two or so. What determines what, what, when a game is featured? Well, we work with our partners to find games that are great. Right. When people submit into the marketplace, ones that are trending and doing well, we program so successful for, games exactly, with the featured. Exactly. Gotcha. Cool. And if I pick a category like action adventure, for example, you'll see even here we've made this experience better. First, I'll see all the Xbox Live games, but then I'll see all the top games. These are paid games in mm -hmm. terms of their download. We've now made free fast and available. That wasn't quite as, as convenient in Windows Phone 7. Right. And new. All these pivots make it quicker and easier. I never understand why people play that Swipey Man game, yeah, but well, anyway. It's pretty fun, actually. <laughs> so all these things make it easier for someone to find your app. Awesome. And get into your app. Love it. Okay, so one more thing I want to show here, and that is how you can have your app show up in a search result. Okay. We call that search extras. Okay. Okay, so what, imagine I'm a user and I'm just going to do a search. Could be any search, but in this particular example, I'm going to do a search for movies. This is a so, web search you're doing? Uh, just a search. I okay. push the search button. I'm, I'm a user. I'm, out, I'm thinking about movies. Okay. So on Windows Phone 7, when you do a search for movies, here I am in Las Vegas, it tells you this is an instant answer with movies that are playing near you in Las Vegas. Nice. And we'll even give you a list of movies. And one of the nice things we do in Windows Phone 7, we had the idea of a restaurant card that told you all the information about a restaurant card. Well, here we're adding to that. We have this idea of a movie card. So here's information about the movie source code, which I just clicked. And one of the things that's cool is I can pan over and now there's an extra pivot called extras. Okay. Just like in the hubs, in the music hub, we have an extras area where your music app can appear. If you're an app that does things with movies, right. then you can appear in extras. So right here, I was, as a user, I did a search. I found the movie source code, but now I want to watch a trailer. I can just jump to IMDB and what I'm doing is the IMDB app has installed and it set itself up to say, I know movies. Right. When the, a movie is shown, put me in the extras list. And when the user launches me, as you see, it jumps right into that so movie. So any sort of app you have on your phone installed that knows movies will show up in that extras panel. That's right, panel. for a movie. Nice. And any app I have installed on my phone that knows restaurants can show up right there for a restaurant. So That's if you're great. An app what a, that, a great way to find additional apps and a great way to have your apps as a developer be found. Exactly. The idea, just like hubs, when a user goes to the music hub, they want music apps. When the user does a search for a restaurant, we want to be able to connect that restaurant to your app. Absolutely. So it takes fewer clicks for the user and they can get their tasks done better. And sometimes, you know, there's different uh, different things I want to know about a restaurant. So I may want to know this person's review, but this person's direction. So having all those apps pop up for me is just all my information right exactly, at my fingertips. Exactly, exactly. I love it, Joe. Lots of new opportunities for developers to have users find their apps. Great stuff, Joe. Now, what about your next demo? What's the theme of your next demo? Um, well, there's a whole bunch of features, as I said, that let you deeply integrate with the phone. Okay. Sensors, data, live tiles, all that. So we should take a look at that. Let's do that. Okay, so the first example, a lot of people have been saying, hey, we want to be able to get the raw camera sensor feed so we can do cool things like scan a barcode as in this Amazon app. So okay. let's pretend we want to find a book on Amazon. Okay. We need a book. Oh, look, Joe. I happen to have one. Nice. Look at that. So what's the, what's the name of this book? Let's the name see. of the book is called um, Question Mark, and it's by Charles Satchi. Sounds cool. So if I want to find this book using the Amazon app, I can touch the scan a barcode. Uh, item right there. Now we're going to hold that up if we get the light just right. All right, there we go. I got a buzz. Amazon found the book. Charles Sachi, question mark. Look sure enough. That. And now I could just buy the book. That's so, amazing. So that's cool, but, but the demo doesn't end there. No. That's a sort of a basic thing. You would expect to be able to get the camera feed and, and do the barcode. So that's cool. But where we're going a step farther is enabling you as app vendors to not just do those things, but also integrate with the phone in a more deep way. So you can see here, I have a button right here that will let me pin mm -hmm. that barcode scanning to my start experience. Now imagine you're an active barcode scanner. Right. You want to put a live tile right up there on the front of your start menu. So anytime you want, you just touch that and voila, you're very quickly launched right into the Amazon barcode scanner. So wow. the idea is that apps can have more than one live tile that point to locations inside the app so the user can choose which thing they want to have. So you can get to it from all sorts of different exactly, ways. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. All right, so that was the camera. What about other sensors? Oh yeah, we're one of the nice things that we're announcing in this release is support for the gyro. So okay. I have a cool demo app here, Layer, that shows no, you. Not this. Not no. well. No. That's, okay. That's cool too. <laughs> but this shows you uh, how you can use the gyro in a really nice way. Okay. 
So let's take a look at this app, Layer, which okay, you've probably heard of before. Exactly. Yep. So here I have a bunch of favorite layers. I'm going to pan over. There's more. These are the ones I've been using recently. We made a layer called Tweets at Mix to see the location of where people are tweeting. And when I hold this up, you can see as I pan around, we're taking advantage of both the gyro and the compass. Where's some tweets? Let's look over here. There we go. Oh, wow. Uh, someone over there. There they are. And how far are they? What they is must over be downstairs. <laughs> they must be down below us. Um, these are people who have, are tweeting here at Mix, and their, uh, their, their location is included in their tweet. And cool. you can see as I pan around, we use the gyro. There's so a little bug. So they're somewhere <laughs> in the <laughs> distance that way. Yeah, they could exactly. be like at the hotel that's down true. the street. They, that's true. By now they could be. Uh, so well, the, the cool thing that we've done here is we've tried to take the compass and the gyro together in what we call motion sensor, and we do the fancy complicated math. Oh, good. So it's easy for you as a developer <laughs> to track where things are in space and show things on top of the camera sensor in a way that looks really, really nice. We're trying to make it simple and straightforward for developers to do that kind of cool feature. That's awesome. I love that one. All right. All right, so we've shown us some of the amazing stuff you guys are doing with Search. Uh, we've showed us some integration. Uh, you got one more for us? Yes, multitasking. Nice. So there's a number of things we're trying to do with multitasking. We want to enable apps to launch and resume really fast. We want background file transfers. We want background audio. Mm -hmm. And we want to do all those things while trying to do as much of them ourselves so that third-party app code isn't running in the background and using up the battery. Very so, key. So we have an architecture where we do many of those things, and then we have this cool new idea called Live Agents. When you say we, who's we? We, we the operating system <laughs> okay, platform. Okay, good. And we do those <laughs> things in the background, and then you can write Live Agents that do other things in the background. Background. I'll show you an example of that. Last. All right, let's take a look at so it. So let's start with this. Okay, so here I am in Fruit Ninja. Yay. I'm going to start this game. We'll go into classic mode, and of course, now I'm hacking away at Fruit. And today in Windows Phone, if I get a phone call or do something to navigate away from the game, mm -hmm. when I try to go back, it might take a long time for the game to resume. But with fast app that. switching, look how fast that is. It's really quick and easy. And it and brings you right back into the same game. You're not at the initial Whoa. loading screen. Oops. Uh, You're not so good, Exactly. Joe. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm a little distracted right now. Fine. But also, if I press and hold the back button, we now have a fast app switching mode where you can see oh, these wow. other things that I've been doing. There was the search I did a little earlier. And here's a pretty fun game that a lot of people might want to task switch between. Here's Angry Birds for Windows Phone. Nice. Uh, I was excited to be able to tell everybody we're expecting to have this available in the marketplace for all Windows Phone users May 25th. Uh, next month awesome. real soon. So there's Angry Birds. Then the last thing I wanted to show is sort of one application that pulls these things together. This is a Qantas app that okay. takes advantage of background live agents and some of that phone integration stuff I was talking about. So let's imagine I'm, I actually need to be headed to the airport because I have this flight. Are you going flight. to Australia? Well, I am. I have this flight Las, Las Vegas to Los Angeles okay. at 11.40 a.m. And then tomorrow I go to from Los Angeles to Melbourne. And what I can do, as I sort of talked about earlier, I can take parts of this app and actually pin them to the start menu. So you can see here, I just pinned my flight tomorrow. Wow. And here, up it's here, like you can see. like a calendar task manager. Yeah, exactly. One. Here I have my flight today. And this, this, you see the tile animate and flip? I like it that. It shows me that's my flight today. I leave from Terminal 1D. It's, uh, I'm, it's on time at 1030. And here tomorrow, I could check in. So I'm going to touch that tile to launch into the part of the Qantas app for my flight tomorrow. And you can see, I jumped right in. Here I am at this flight. I can see arrival information at 73 and sunny in Melbourne. I could see my booking. I could see um, it at a glance. And if I navigate back away, one of the cool things that's happening is one of these live agents in the background is going to notify me. There we go. There's an alarm. I need to get going to the airport to make my flight to Las Vegas. So I'm going to, so, sorry, to make my flight from, from Las, Las Vegas, Vegas to Los Angeles. And the other thing that happened in the background was that same live agent has changed this tile. You can see now it says, get to the airport. Right. And it's red. So now when I jump into the app, the app is giving me a warning. It's not sure I'm going to make it because it knows wow. my location. It's been tracking that in the background the whole time. I can pull this down. It knows how far you are from the airport? Exactly. I can pull this down and it gives me other flight options if I want to take one of those. Or you can see right here, one of the new launchers and choose, one of the new launchers and choosers we have is a quick way for an app to launch into getting you directions. So here get I can get out. directions from here to the airport. So, so that's one quick example of an app that kind of puts all those things together. Multiple live tiles, background live agents, helping a user get into the useful parts of the app and, right. and making things easy for you. Awesome. Simplifying your life. Thank you so much. You guys have been busy we're, over we're, at the Windows Phone team. This is a lot of news, and I really appreciate your time. And, uh, and that's it. That's it from Mix 2011. Thanks, Joe. Thanks.